Tysabri versus Ocrevus. Which MS drug is more effective? Today, we'll look at this Italian observational study and see the outcomes of people taking these medications in terms of relapses, disability, and side effects. Remember what former world chess champion Emmanuel Lasker said, when you see a good move, look for a better one. I'll give a brief background on these two medications, videos specifically on these two medications for more detailed information in the notes below. Ocrevus is a medication given by IV once every six months. It binds CD20, a protein on the surface of B lymphocytes, the white blood cells that make antibodies, causing the cells to break open and die. It can cause side effects such as infusion reactions, rash, high wheezing during the treatment, and it also weakens the immune system and can sometimes cause infections. Here is one study, a randomized trial, just to show the effectiveness of the medication. This is a randomized trial in relapsing MS against Rebif, a lower efficacy disease-modifying therapy and interferon formulation, and Ocrevus was better. It was more effective. It reduced progression of disability by 35.6%. That's not Ocrevus versus placebo. It's Ocrevus versus another active agent, so it would probably be even better against placebo. Tysabri works on a protein called alpha-4 integrin on the surface of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, or T and B cells, normally get into the central nervous system by binding on the surface of the blood-brain barrier and then diabetesing within the central nervous system. Tysabri blocks this, effectively sequestering lymphocytes outside of the central nervous system. So it does doesn't kill immune cells, it just keeps them out so they can't cause damage. Because lymphocytes are no longer surveilling the brain, there's one very rare side effect, which is an infection by the JC virus, which can cause an infection called PML of the brain or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. It's extremely rare, but can be very debilitating or even fatal. Here's one study on the effectiveness of Tysabri, a randomized trial against placebo in relapsing MS. And Tysabri was more effective than placebo, reducing disability progression by 42%. This looks better than Ocrevus, but remember we're going against placebo, not against another active agent. By the way, my name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about MS every Wednesday. As a conflict of interest statement, I was a clinical rater in clinical trials related to both of these medications. The OPERA trial mentioned earlier, along with the ASCEND trial, Tysabri versus placebo, in secondary progressive MS, though I was not compensated for this. Here's a little background on the study we're going to look at. Again, this is from the Italian MS registry. They had 770 people with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, so this is not on progressive multiple sclerosis, and they were all treated at disease onset within a year with one of these higher efficacy medications, Tysabri or Ocrevus. Both of these drugs are considered to be stronger medications, better than injectable medications like interferons and glutaramor acetate or oral multiple sclerosis medications. Now, more people took Tysabri. 568 took Tysabri versus 212 on Ocrevus. So what they did is propensity matching. They took 195 people on Ocrevus and matched them to 195 similar people on Tysabri. Similar age, similar disability at onset, similar number of relapses in the last year prior to starting the study, for example. Now, is this as good as a randomized control trial where you take someone and randomize them to get either Tysabri or Ocrevus? Of course not. There could be other unknown confounders, but it's the best they could do with an observational study. Now, this was not a long study. The median follow-up was only 1.63 years for Tysabri and 1.6 years for Ocrevus, so it's possible one drug could be better than the other over a very long period of time, even if the short-term outcomes were similar. Next, we move to the baseline characteristics, the characteristics of people prior to starting the study. On the left column is natalizumab or Tysabri. On the right is Ocrevus, and because of the 
propensity matching, they're very similar. The average age was 35, around 60% of people in the study were women, and most had oligoclonal bands in the cerebral spinal fluid, as is typical of people with MS, 93% of people taking Tysabri, 95% of people taking Ocrevus. Most of the people in the study had relatively low disability. This is the EDSS, or Expanded Disability Status Scale, a measure of disability in MS research, and the median EDSS in both groups was around 2.3, which is quite low. Most of these people did not have significant mobility difficulty at the start of the study. They also looked at the number of relapses prior to starting treatment, and most people had none, and they're not including the initial attacks, so most of these people were started relatively soon after their first attack before they had a chance to have a subsequent attack. Now let's move to the results. So first we'll look at relapses, and there were essentially none in the study. So in the Tysabri group, there were no relapses at all, and in the Ocrevus group, there was just one person who had a relapse, and keep in mind, there are a total of about 400 people in the study for more than one and a half years. Now this may seem crazy to you, but the actual clinical trials definition of a relapse is having new neurological symptoms for at least 24 hours, not caused by another physiologic insult to the body, such as infection, with objective changes on neurological exam. So it doesn't necessarily mean people didn't have new or fluctuating symptoms, they just didn't have events like optic neuritis that could be confirmed on examination, and it's well known that both Tysabri and Ucrevis are very effective in suppressing relapses, so this is essentially a wash. They both worked to stop relapses. What about disability outcomes? Even if you don't have a relapse, you can still get worse. This is a phenomenon known as PIRA, or progression independent of relapse activity. Some people, even younger people with relapsing MS, can have some slow progression of symptoms. Well, it was about the same. Again, blue is Tysabri, red is Ocrevus. There were 23 people, or 11.79% of people taking Tysabri, who had PIRA, or subtle disability accumulation not associated with a relapse versus 25 people or 12.8% taking Ocrevus, about the same, obviously no statistically significant difference. What about reaching specific disability milestones? They looked at EDSS4, moderate disability, often associated with some degree of mobility impairment. Seven people reached this on Tysabri versus 10 taking Ocrevus, similar, no statistically significant differences. What about EDSS 6.0, requiring a cane to walk 100 meters. It was 13 people taking Tysabri versus 15 taking Ocrevus, again, about the same. Now, you may say, hey, if you reach EDSS 6.0, didn't you also reach EDSS 4? That's true, and I think they mean that they're looking at people who had EDSS less than 4 who move up to 4 during the study, or less than 6 who move up to 6 or higher. I actually actually emailed the authors to clarify this, but they didn't get back to me, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're referring to. But anyway, the disability outcomes were essentially the same. Tysabri and Ocrevus were equal. We can also look at this in graphical form. On the left is the PIRA data, in the middle EDSS 4.0, and on the right is EDSS 6, or requiring a cane. Again, blue is Tysabri, red is Ocrevus. Keep in mind, if you look at the right side of the graph, it may not be that accurate because the median follow-up was less than two years, so not that many people actually followed up to five years. That's a small sample size. Nonetheless, you can see the two drugs were equally effective. One interesting thing to note is that by the five-year mark, Pura was pretty significant. And about 30% had Pura in both groups by five years. So even though these drugs are very effective at suppressing relapses and new MRI lesions, the number of people who have subtle progression is not insignificant. What about attrition and side effects? So more people tended to switch from Tysabri, and more people tended to stay on Ocrevus. A lot of people would say that Tysabri, if you're JC virus antibody negative, is a safer medication because Ocrevus does have this risk of infections, which can be potentially serious. However, Tysabri has other problems. There's a rebound effect. If you stop the medication, you could test negative for the JC virus antibody and later test positive. So there are other issues, and sure enough, more people switched from Tysabri. So 27 
people, or 13.9%, stop taking Tysabri during this relatively short follow-up period and switch to another medicine for various reasons. Two had elevation of liver enzymes. 18, the most common reason by far, tested positive for the JC virus antibody. Four had allergic reactions. One had progression of multiple sclerosis. One stopped medication in order to get pregnant and one for personal choice. And nine of these 27, one third switched to Ocrevus. Whereas Ocrevus was kind of like the black hole of disease modifying therapies, people tended to stay on it and only eight 4.1% switched from Ocrevus to a different medication, three for pregnancy planning, and one for disease progression, and four for de-escalation. This means taking a weaker medication to reduce the risk of side effects such as infections. So people seem to be more likely to stay on Ocrevus. So to summarize, this observational study suggests that Ocrevus and Tysabri are both very effective at preventing relapses and both about equally effective at preventing disability progression, at least in this study with short follow-up. So my personal opinion, of course, you can talk to your own provider for personal advice, is that it makes sense to choose medications more based on personal preference, fear of side effects, JC virus antibody status, convenience, other medical comorbidities, and risk of infections from Ocrevus, for instance, rather than believing one medication is better than the other because they're probably about equally effective. Let me know if you've taken either of these medications. What were your results? Did it prevent disability progression? Did you have side effects? And let me know if you have any ideas for other videos.